What's up YouTube? It's your boy Will Ryder, back at you in another video. And today I'm going to show you how I like to camp. I am out here in the Desert Wildlife Refuge, uh, just north of Las Vegas. It is cold out, it's 38 degrees right now. There is uh, snow on the ground, not that you can see. I'll show you, there's a few spots of snow still on the ground from when it snowed uh, last week sometime. Today's January 1st, I'm starting off the new year, uh, having a little bit of a, an adventure. Uh, no camper today, I'll be uh, staying in a tent and uh, I'll show you all the stuff I brought with me. First things first is uh, shelter. I got this little two man tent I'm gonna be setting up, I think uh, right here behind the truck. Maybe on the side of the truck, we're using so much, uh, so many plants. Surprisingly, the ground is quite soft. It is rocky, but it's soft. But I'll be putting the tent on these uh, moving blankets and then uh, Side of the bottom of the tent, I'll be putting this uh, inflatable ISO mat. Just keep your body off the ground. Uh, just blow air into it. Works pretty good. I usually use it to uh, take naps inside of my office. And inside the sleeping bag, the first layer will be this uh, wool blanket I stole from boot camp almost 20 years ago. This won't be used. This is the uh, call it baby sack. It's a Gore-Tex line. If you're going to sleep under the stars without a tent, you want this because it cuts the, the wind and it's waterproof. Yeah, but that'll be going inside uh, this first sleeping bag, the thinner one, and then I got a thicker, thicker black one. And uh, I'll stay plenty warm. I've slept in uh, colder and wetter conditions than this before, and I've done fine. But first thing I'm going to do is set up this tent. There's my house for the night. I am going to put the uh, rain flyer on over it. Another thing I don't like about this little tent is you have to have a stake to put it down. And I got these giant stakes because I use this a lot on uh, beaches in, uh, in Japan. You need these giant stakes to get anything to uh, hold down in the sand. And then you got to go find some big chunks of uh, coral or rocks to put down on the stakes so they don't pull out. Here the ground is uh, not fine. Get some rocks out of here. Forgot a pillow, so the wool blankets will be used as a pillow. Underneath, I got the uh, those moving blankets down there. I need to cook out here too. Usually, what I do is I dig a pit, uh, put rocks around it, and do a wall around that to keep the uh, the wind off of it, if you're camping on a beach, that wind kicks up the sand and then the sand gets in your food. I'm a little out of breath. It's like uh, 6,500 uh, feet above sea level here. Here's the snow I was talking about. But it is just beautiful out here. <clears throat> the main trail that cuts across from the 95 over there goes across, follows this ridge all the way down around through there somewhere and out to the 93. So if you're over in uh, Anellis Air Force Base and you look to the north, you see this mountain ridge right here. This is what it looks like from the other side. I'm looking south. Nellis is straight that way. Just uh, where that mountain range is over there is part of the test site. On the other side of that, I uh, suspect that Creech is over there. And then straight north of here, Probably about 45 miles is uh, Groom Lake. Um, I can show you on the map later what I'm talking about. Uh, that's where Area 51 is. So like I'm saying, wind's about five, six miles an hour. I don't want to put a fire on the ground. Um, so I'm gonna use this uh, little baby Weber. And I got a bunch of hardwood cutoffs that we'll be using as, uh, as fuel. Just gonna be careful. The wind right now is probably five, six miles an hour. Really light, but uh, anything kicks off over here. I'm gonna burn this beautiful place down. So now I get the shelter done. Uh, kind of set up. Don't really need to do much else, but uh, get food. So I went out and uh, did some forage. I didn't bring any food out there with me. So I took my little uh, 22 Henry rifle here and uh, found a lame cow. Took that bad boy down. And those of you who don't know, these little 22 Henrys are like uh, pretty much like a 50 BMG. It was a little much for that, uh, that big cow, so the only thing I was able to save was these uh, 
these tenderloin steaks off of it. Um, as I was cleaning up the cow, uh, I found some uh, some herbs. So I got some spices, uh, found some garlic that I smashed up, and then uh, dug up uh, an onion. And then I was walking back, stupid little pig tripped over. He's dead now, down to 22, got some bacon from that pig. And then uh, when I was burying the pig, I actually dug up a, oh, I found a bunch of uh, shiitake mushrooms, so that's good. Got this little uh, cast iron pan that I got for the wife recently. Gotta wipe that down. It's a little dusty from the road, road trip out here. And we're gonna cook that in the uh, the Weber down there with all these. Uh, it's mostly uh, walnut. Got some maple, and then a bunch of uh, oak cut offs. So nice solid hardwoods. Um, it's a pretty big bucket, so I should have enough for breakfast. So we might save some of that bacon for breakfast. So I am going to start a fire and get cooking. Where I just heard a uh, gun cop or a gunshot crack off. Sound like it goes up that way. But I haven't seen anyone else out here. Let's be mindful. I do have a uh, Glock 17 on me as protection. Um, home protection rounds, hollow points. But I don't think you should have any problems. I also got the uh, Henry 22 BMG lever action over here so we are gonna get some food ready here the steaks have those seasoned right away nice little steaks my uh, son was supposed to come out with me that's why I have the 22 I was gonna pop off a couple rounds um, but I don't know if you're allowed to shoot out here and we'll leave that fat on there but it was packed up last night in the truck, so that's why I have it with me still. There's a little mixture of salt, pepper, and some other some other things. I didn't put any garlic in this mix though, because uh, I have some garlic here that we found out in the wild. Size of that. Real good. Put it to the side. Get the fire. Make sure we're inserting a fire. I got the uh, big pile of dirt over there too. Loose dirt, uh, just in case something flares up. And uh, I just use this. Uh, just curlings from. Uh, my workshop i think this is all it's all oak and uh there's nothing nowhere to put it down in the grate there so i used a old can of snus i just shoved it full of there so it would like hold it up there in the grate and it wouldn't just like fall in between it and out of it well, even camping i don't like having my hands dirty and sticky these will go back into nature and then uh, I think the burros like digging these up and eating them the wild donkeys they have out here which I haven't seen surprisingly I'm wondering if there's coyotes out this far um, last time camping down the uh, way down the road right off the 95 there's a lot of coyotes I was out there with uh, just me and my Scottish Terrier and uh, when I throw the flashlight, point it around, and uh, there was eyeballs looking at me from every direction. 
So I think that's all we need for onions. That'll be good. Mushrooms. The nice about mushrooms is uh, you can't really overcook them. They're like mostly water. And these are shiitake mushrooms, not uh, wild Nevada peyote. I'm not going to have uh, too crazy a night. I have a couple beers. That'll be it. You're out here in the wild, you got to stay on your toes. I'm about, uh, I don't know, probably about eight miles I can see the trail that came off of that way. I really like these mushrooms. Okay. I need some of those for breakfast too. And the bacon's good. that uh, down to small size for this little skillet. I got it white clean. And the reason I cook bacon is because uh, before I cook anything in a cast iron skillet, like this one here, especially a new one, you can see I just finished polishing that up recently. Is uh, I like the flavor that it puts into the meat. Not a whole lot of fat on these, so you're gonna want that flavor from the uh, fatty bacon. The grease helps it from uh, not sticking and it helps season it faster, I think, uh, better than uh, vegetable oil. And everything I have out here will end up back with me. I won't leave any trash out here that uh, won't be beneficial to, uh, to the environment, like the onions. They're right there on the ground for now, but I will be throwing them way over there to keep the, uh, the critters out of the, the campsite here. So I'm going to wait for this to die down. Uh, the fire's looking pretty good. Take a look at that. So that's the bacon we're getting put on. Um, cook this. Nice layer of grease on there. It keeps it anything from sticking. But I noticed the uh, fire was kind of dying down. Uh, this wood was really dry. So and it's a little, little more wood. And uh, you can see how well that bacon's cooking. It was uh, it's cooking really well. And some garlic. I like to cook uh, the onions, the mushrooms, and the rest of it to a point that onions take a little bit of a color, and then I know I can put the meat on. Got some meat on there. I'm actually gonna cover it up too, a little bit here. You see that flame shooting out of the side here? I'm gonna cover it up. Nope, still coming out. You give it about two minutes, flip it, a minute and a half, and then we'll sear it. That should be about it. Let's look at her. That's a nice rare. Looks like a medium rare. Oh, can't see. The sides look nice. All right, I'm gonna take this off and we'll see the sticks. This is just me searing the meat. It goes uh, pretty quick, but autofocus, again, not working. You'll see it later, not working in the video. Get that steak up there. That up. So when I go camping, that's how I cook. Cut this open, see how she looks. Nice crust on the outside. Yeah, it's a good, uh, good medium rare. <clears throat> I'm just gonna cook these a little slower. Yeah, tenderloin. 
Oh, it's so tender. That's a good steak. Oh man. Oh. Oh yeah. Those mushrooms and onions. Get that bacon. This is perfect. I mean, but you can't get a steak this good at Outback. Sorry, I can't talk. I eat this. Oh. Sun's dropping uh, down behind the mountain now. Should be for a pretty sunset with all those, uh, those clouds above it. It is cold. Um, I don't know if it's below freezing yet. I haven't checked the temperature. I might drive down the road a little bit to go call the wife. Let her know I made it. I'm safe. I'm all set up. There's actually a uh, cell phone tower about two miles that way. Uh, when I seen it driving through, it's like this big uh, yucca tree forest, like these these trees you see out here, but like really thick. Out of nowhere, you see this little cell phone tower, and uh, I looked at the phone real quick, and uh, I had full bars of 5G. So, but up here. I don't get any service. Maybe I'll try to take a picture so you can guys see. I can actually see it with the binos from here. I'll insert it here, I guess. And then uh, I have one more layer to put on. Other than that, uh, to stay warm, I have to climb in my uh, sleeping bag. <laughs> or I can start the truck and run it. And I didn't think it was going to be this cold. Um, also didn't think I was going to be at like 6,500 feet. That's what my little GPS app says on my phone. Oh, when it does get dark, I have this uh, 2 watt red laser from Wicked Lasers. And I'm going to try to summon some uh, UFOs. I don't believe in aliens and stuff, but I'll see if I can see something with it. I've seen other people do that. Um, I can't remember that guy's name. Some guy that has some group where they summon aliens together and they sit in a circle and take peyote. Oh. I am uh, definitely ready for a hot breakfast already. Uh, I got a couple eggs, that bacon, some of the mushrooms left, and I did save a piece of that onion. The rest of the food was washed, like the cutting board and the plate, about 100 yards that way. Uh, keep the coyotes away from here. Anything that has any uh, residue of food on it is going to be locked up in the truck. Um, I don't really like expect a coyote to attack me, but I don't want to risk it either. Um, I don't know if there's any other predators out here. I doubt it if they have bobcats or anything like that. But it's all a little ways over there. If I hear him yapping tonight, uh, I'll flash him with a flashlight, try to get him uh, on camera so you can see their evil little eyes looking over at us. I have not seen anyone come down this trail. Uh, I was going to show you on the map where I was at. All right, let's make sure we're in focus here. That should be good. All right, so here's Vegas down here. Went up to 95, got off in this Corn Creek exit, and then followed this trail all the way up and over. And here is where it splits. It splits right here. It goes up and it goes back down to Gas Peak. But we are, we went farther north. And then we went a little east. I'm sorry, west. And right about there is where we're at. Actually, I think we're a little farther east because I can see this mountain right here. It's kind of this sticks out by itself away from the rest of the mountains. And it's uh, it's north uh, east of me. So we're right around here, close to this, uh, this line right here, which is part of the Nevada Test Center. Uh, we cannot cross that line. Um, so I'm thinking right there, right about where the uh, F and forest is. And then uh, Groom Lake, all the way down here somewhere, go straight north of us. There's Groom Lake right there. There's your Area 51, so I'm gonna report my laser. Due north, try to get some of these UFOs to come over here and come out with me. Or maybe get some weird uh, security guys in white unmarked trucks. We'll see. The mention was, uh, after I went out there and dumped all the food, I did a big uh, perimeter check. Probably about a 100 yard circle all the way around the uh, campsite. 
And even in the big patches of snow that are down, like in the dips down here, I don't see any animal tracks, I don't see any game trails. I don't think there's any wildlife out here at all. It's a weird spot. I haven't even seen any birds. It's just weird. Totally forgot that I uh, brought the light. I could do some nighttime recording. <laughs> I just uh, started the truck. Well, not really started, I turned it on. It's got the little temperature thing in there. It says it's 29 degrees out, which is a lot colder than uh, I thought it was gonna get. I was thinking like mid thirties. But again, the elevation, I didn't pay attention to that. Uh, and I wasn't planning on stopping here. I was planning on stopping about 10 miles down the road down there. Uh, but it was quite crowded with the people going up and down the, the main trail. And I find this, uh, what are they called? Pine Nut Road, I think is what it's called. The trail that's right here behind me. Oh, whiskey would have been a smarter idea than beer. Uh, I'm pretty sure the beer's gonna freeze soon. Uh, but it does taste good. I know uh, some of you are thinking like, why would you do this to yourself? Well, uh, my New Year's resolution is to uh, disconnect a little more from uh, the outside world. <laughs> I started this uh, about a week ago. I deleted all social media. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I no longer have accounts. My only, I guess, uh, big account I have is uh, YouTube. And then I have Telegram because I use it for work. And I think that's it. I still have email. But if uh, family wants to get in touch with me, they can't just like something on Facebook anymore. They have to actually call me or text me. Um, just a lot of negative stuff this year. And uh, I delete a lot of people that are post negative stuff. And I've, I've done that forever. I don't go on uh, Facebook or Instagram to uh, see negativity. I just want to see like, well, let's see how big your dog is now and stuff like that. Um, I don't want to care. I don't care about your headaches, um, your baby mama drama, all that. I don't need that negativity in my life. I have my own problems um, and I've never been one to post that kind of stuff on social media. Facebook's just, uh, just an evil, evil spot for that kind of stuff. Instagram's a little better. Uh, most of the people I follow on Instagram are like the uh, 1320 guys, uh, do all kinds of car racing, um, demolition mat, uh, a lot of woodworking uh, uh, pages. Jimmy DeResta, I like him. I always learn something from his stories on uh, Instagram. But still, still seeing some uh, negative stuff in Instagram and uh, I've been unfollowing a lot of people on there. I think uh, I'm only following like 80 something people on there when I deleted it. So just a uh, good disconnect and here it's even better. I don't even have access to phone calls. There is zero phone service. Um, but like I said, about two miles that way, there's that cell phone tower, I got 5G service. If there's an emergency, I just have to stumble or crawl down there. It's not too far, people have done worse. I'd be okay. But this is like, uh, it's good to just reflect uh, on your own thoughts, like get stuck in your own mind for a little while. Not too much where you're, you're like, uh, I guess in jail is a good example. Um, where you're thinking about stuff that happened back in the fourth grade. You don't want to get that bored. I'm going to keep myself busy trying to stay warm. i got my wool blanket wrapped around my legs now. I'm feeling pretty cozy. Um, I'll feel a lot better when I crawl in my sleeping bag. It's going to be ice cold when I crawl in it. It's going to be awful. But it'll warm up. But uh, it's good to just, just reflect on things and not have the, uh, the outside world distractions. Um, I'd love it if my family was into stuff like this. Um, you know, just sit down and, and talk instead of everyone being in their, in their device. Um, but they're not into the outdoor stuff like I am. Uh, I was hoping the camper would change that when we got the camper. But I think one, two times now, family came out to the camper and they just left me one time we all stayed and that's when we went to uh, Utah they couldn't really leave but uh, yeah the first time taking the camper out it was uh, like 125 degrees inside the camper it took forever for the AC to actually cool down uh, it was record high temperatures out here I don't blame them from leaving I was like straight up 
Walt Whitman walk around in my underwear. It was so hot. Um, one of the other times was up in the uh, McWilliams campground up in the mountains uh, on the other side of the 95 that way. It was uh, just a bad day for all of them uh, with school and stuff being online. They still had assignments that were due by midnight and they like, they're just overloaded with this online school stuff. But that's the big reason I'm out here doing what I'm doing. Just a little bit of disconnect and not to disconnect from my family because I, like I said, I'd love to have them out here with me. My son actually was uh, gonna go with me all the way until about noon today, right before when I, uh, I left. So that was kind of uh, disappointing he didn't want to come out here uh, that's his little Henry 22 that was uh, I showed you earlier. Uh, he loves planking with that thing. He's, uh, he's a great shot with it. Uh, eventually, I'm going to have to force him to uh, get get in touch with nature and enjoy stuff like this. It's like quiet. I hear nothing but my own voice. Uh, the ringing in my ears from living down there in that valley has finally stopped. And I'm just surprised I still can't hear any wildlife. No noises at all. There's like food over there that I dumped that I should hear coyotes yelping at over there. No birds, nothing. It's like quiet, quiet. It's gonna be kind of creepy sleeping here tonight. So hopefully I uh, bust up my laser and uh, you know get some uh, extraterrestrials to come hang out with me tonight. Ooh, if it's not too cold for them. Back to my thoughts. What a freaking night. So it got so cold at one point that the camera stopped working. I was trying to record the uh, laser and trying to summon um, the UFOs with the laser and I couldn't get the camera to turn on. So I thought, oh, maybe it's just too cold. So I go start the truck. The truck says it's 28 degrees still, but it starts running, getting the heat going. And then I see that the transmission temperature is only at 30 degrees. I was like, oh, that's like kind of cold for it not running for just a couple hours. Then I, uh, Looked at the temperature thing again up on the, uh, what do you call that, rear view mirror. And it says that it's uh, 17 degrees out. So once that air starts flowing through the front end and gets that temperature, the correct temperature, 17 freaking degrees. I was like, oh man, it is cold. And I kind of gave up and everything and uh, crawled in my sleeping bag and went to sleep. Um, the trip out of there was uh, quite bumpy. Uh, I was probably going a little faster than I should have been. I'll show you some dash cam footage of that, how rough it was. And uh, put that here. And you can see uh, that's me driving through the uh, the yucca forest there, and it's kind of creepy when you leave that early in the morning and it's still dark out. But it had a good trip overall. It was beautiful looking up to the stars. I could see the uh, that ring of the the Milky Way, even though the uh, still had some light pollution from Vegas, uh, way south of me uh, down in the valley. But most of the mountain that was in between us uh, blocked all that off. Overall, I had a great trip. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, if you'd like to give it a thumbs up, if you didn't give it a thumbs down, let me know what you thought in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.